So, Pat, tell me about the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. It's amazing to me how many people have never visited this place. Oh, and Which is a shame it because is. this is one of the most inspiring places you'll ever be. This is the heart of Alabama's space program, which a lot of people say, why is all this here? And the reason why all of this is here is because in 1950, the missile team came to Huntsville to build missiles. The space race started. We moved from missiles to rockets, and we eventually, right here from Huntsville, Alabama, built a rocket that put Americans on the moon. In I think a lot of people don't realize that, that Alabama had such a big role in building this big Saturn V rocket. By the way, how big is this thing? That is 363 feet tall, and if you have to go all the way up to that very tippity top above that silver part up there to get to your astronauts. So the rest of that is all fuel. That's all managed right here at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and today NASA right here in Huntsville is managing the next rocket to take us back to the moon and on beyond the Artemis program. That is awesome but this is the actual size of the Saturn V right? That's correct now this is a vertical model so this is the only model you'll ever see of a Saturn V but inside that big white building there is the National Historic Landmark Saturn V and that was a dynamic test article that they used to kind of shake and bake that rocket to see if it could hold together and when they launched all five when they tested all five of those F1 engines at the base of that rocket it was it felt like an earthquake as far away as Birmingham Wow so for families that come for the first time that, that don't really have an idea what, what what are some of the things they can see here other than the things you've talked about well you know they can learn about the history of space things that have happened here in Alabama and across the world to put to put you know change to change the world literally change the world this space exploration changes so much of our lives in ways people don't even understand. They, the phone that they may be watching this on when they see this is something that's directly related to the space program. So they can learn about that, but they can also find out what's going on right now, how people are living and working on the International Space Station and how and where we're going next. We're going back to the moon and all the things and the exciting things that are involved with that. You have a lot of hands-on exhibits here, which is cool. Yeah, we want people to feel connected to this you know, this is science, and science is kind of hard sometimes, but what we like to do is make sure that people feel connected to it, that they can experience it for themselves. They can sit and pick up a phone and listen to what it might have, you know, what, how does this thing work? Well, we'll tell you in ways that are simple enough to understand. We have the Apollo 16 capsule that went to the moon and came back. We have so many incredible artifacts. We have a moon rock, which, you know. This is a real moon rock. It's a real moon rock straight from the moon. And as a matter of fact, Alan Bean says he remembers it and it was his favorite rock. Wow. But the cool thing I think is not only looking back at the past but looking forward to the future. We're, we're not done with space exploration. I think it's just getting started. Absolutely not and you know that's what we teach our space camp kids every day is that they are part of that future that they that whatever their imaginations can take them it, will, it can be real. I mean, you just think about it. Remember Star Trek and Picard walking around with his, his books all on a tablet? And we thought, oh, look at that science fiction. Today it's real. So, you know, that all these things that we couldn't have imagined, they can create. Wow. So for folks that want to come visit, tell me about the hours and the best times to come. We are open almost all year, 361 days a year, from 9 to 5 every day, so it's super easy to make that plan. Uh, you know, summer's obviously our busy season, so lots I, of I got to ask about Space Camp, because I can't tell you how many kids come up to me and they see I'm a meteorologist and they somehow read that as, as, as somebody that understands space exploration which is fine but they want to do space camp how does that whole process work? well space camp for this summer it's too late you sold out so watch for this early this summer we will sell out quickly because this program is in high demand. We will have more than 40,000 kids coming through our program this year. Where do they come from? Everywhere. We have had kids who've come from almost 150 countries every year, all 50 states, usually 70 to 80 countries a year who come through this program. It's really extraordinary. We are teaching these kids to believe in themselves, to work with as a member of a team, to think critically and to change the world. I think it's important, and nothing wrong with athletics, that's great, but you don't have to be an athlete to be successful. You're gonna go do pros doing something, and there's some kids that have this intrinsic fascination with science and numbers, and and I think this is a bonanza for these kids, don't you think? Well, absolutely, because you know, these are the kids that may not, you know, school may be a little 
a sort of an odd place for them. They may their interests may not be something that their their next door, the kid sitting next to them is going to understand. They come here and they find their tribe. They find the people who who think the way they do, who who think what they know is cool, and it really is affirmation for for what they want to do. Lots of meteorologists work in space exploration because you can't launch without knowing what the weather is. And there's and that's one of the things we teach them is no matter what your interest is, there's a place if you're fascinated by space.